I say manga, the first thing that comes to your mind is Shonen Jump. Shonen Jump is the one responsible for some of the best manga in the last few decades. But as manga keeps on growing, Shonen Jump is not the only giant publisher that dominates the manga sphere, especially going to 2024. There are a lot of great manga outside Shonen Jump, but if you are too lazy to look for them one by one, you only need these 5 manga to kickstart your manga journey in 2024, and all of them are in this video. So you don't have to ask yourself, what manga should I read next? But rather ask yourself, would you like to be a tanuki? Would you like to be a small furry mammal that only eat sh and demands you to pay taxes? I swear to god, shut the fuck up. There is a Japanese myth surrounding Tanuki in Japan that this small creature is known to <clears throat> commits mischievous acts against humans. But not with this Tanuki. This Tanuki will slowly approach you out of nowhere just when life is getting tough and gently ask you the question. Once you get that question, you have no other option than to say Yes, these people of course agreed to be turned into a tanuki. And funny enough, after being a tanuki for a while, they always have the same reaction. Am I dreaming? Is this talking tanuki is real? Can I really escape all of my problems and be a tanuki? Despite asking all of that question, all of them take the offer in a heartbeat and become a tanuki. Some of them are having fun with the other tanukis, others go to the places they wish to go. And funny enough, after being a tanuki for a while, all of them have the same answer. I think I don't want to be a tanuki. Maybe I have a problem that I cannot solve myself, but certainly turning into a tanuki is not going to solve my problem. If I have a problem with my family, I'm gonna go back and talk to them. If I keep failing and almost give up on my life, I will find my way back up and I don't wanna throw myself in front of the train because you know, it kills you. Out of all of these healing manga type of genres, this has to be the most simple yet effective one. Most of these kinds of manga are telling you to run away from your problems or get a companion to be by your side. But this manga tells you to face it. If you thought that being tanuki will solve your problems, well, these guys would certainly disagree with you. A tanuki still had to worry if they could eat on the next day. They still have to worry if they could find a shelter. Being a tanuki is not going to solve your problems. And after these guys turn into a tanuki, they finally realize that if they want to solve their problem, the only way is to face it. I didn't expect a manga about talking fury is giving me motivation to be more productive and stand up to my problems. All we need is a quick break, look from a new perspective to our life problems, and then we get up again and we continue to live on. Sometimes we are too busy with our problems and forget how beautiful it is to just keep on living. But these are their stories. How about you? Would you like to be a tanuki? You have seen an assassin start a new family. You have seen an assassin retire and start a supermarket. Now you're about to see an assassin become a kindergarten teacher and the person we are about to observe is Rita, an ex-champion immortal rank number one leaderboard in killing people. And now she is retired and taking care of kids in the world's safest kindergarten. Safest because the teachers are all of them were ex-criminals. Children of famous celebrities, politicians, CEO of my animalists, I don't know, were secluded in this school protected by these kicking ass teachers. So maybe you could get the basic plot. Teachers and the children are having a good time, then someone tries to hurt the kids, Rita and the other teachers protect the kids, the guy run away and all happy, well, safe and sound. Except there is a huge twist to this manga. Twist is that this girl is so fucking thirsty. The first chapter is literally a guy trying to kill one of the kids. Then she blocks the bullet with a shovel, chases him and puts a gun on his head. But she immediately stops after seeing his face. And her first reaction was like, Oh, he kinda hot though. Are we gonna do that thing? Oh my God, I better reach him up. So basically Rita treats her mission like a Tinder date. 
she asks questions to these guys and if she is not into it, she swipes left. This guy is very attractive, handsome, and cool looking dude. Everything is perfect for her. One question, one wrong answer, and she blows his f head. And even though this is light and comedic manga, mind you that this gets mega violent. I mean like blood splattered, limbs chopped off, heads blown off, bodies on the ground, and makes you wonder how the f is she still smiling? If you ever read a manga and felt like this manga is only made for you, that is the exact same feeling when I read this manga. This has to be the most jump manga out of every jump manga I have ever read. And because it is shonen jump manga, there is a lot of cool stuff happening, and it mostly involved with these teachers. Like one of these teachers swings a grenade using a baseball bat. How can you be more even badass than that? And can we stop for a second and realize that this is not your typical action shonen manga, but these panels goes incredibly hard. It's kind of reminding me of Sakamoto Days. Both these manga have one of the hardest panels ever created. I'm gonna be the Warren Buffett of anime and I will invest all of my money in this manga. When the anime coming out later in a few years time when this has more chapters, I have no doubt that this will be kicking out in public. Speaking of kicking out in public, a certain young lady is trying to kick off her wonderful career. The only problem is that nobody wants her. Feeling really down and desperate, Sakuragi decides to do one more interview. The only feeling that you can relate to when you finally graduate and didn't know what to do after college, and definitely I'm not talking about myself. Sakuragi just wants to be helpful for someone. As simple as thank you for helping me is all she wanted. And that word finally comes out from the most unexpected person, a magical girl that defeats monsters in the place she interviewed. And just like that, Sakuragi is ready to take the first step in her career as a magical girl. So you might be thinking, what the fuck just happened? Apparently, in this universe, Magical Girl is a legit occupation and career. Over 500 companies are hiring for Magical Girls, including the one in the title that I would never want to pronounce. Magi Lumiere and the other companies hiring Magical Girls to defeat monsters in the city. Talking about capital, while the plot is pretty straightforward from the beginning, there are two reasons why I really like this manga. Number one is that while magical girls and monsters are fictional, there are a lot of realistic aspects in this manga. Unlike any other series where the main characters instantly become powerful, Sakuragi has to learn to become a magical girl from the beginning, and so does everyone that wants to be a magical girl. She is not born to be the main character or magical girl like everybody else, or in fact, there is no such thing as magic, because these magical girls are using technology to become magical. The magical broom they advertise is just a rocket-powered skateboard. They literally use a USB cable and an Excel function to cast magic. Number two is how they tackle the world building. There is an entire chapter dedicated for Sakuragi to learn all the technology in the company. There is a whole two pages to see her transform into a magical girl. And the chapter comes after it, Sakuragi immediately assigned to kill monsters without proper training. You already knew the author put a lot of effort in this manga, and you can see they didn't want to cut corners in introducing you to the universe. But there is a hidden meaning behind this manga, the actual reason why this manga exists. Once you get past a certain chapter, you will introduce to the true intention for this manga. You feel happy for Sakuragi getting her paycheck after all the shit she had to do, and then the panel cuts to another magical girl that gets underpaid despite doing all the work by herself. And you may forget that there are 500 other companies and all of them competing in the same industry. And when you do not get calls for help, they have to fire their employees. Sakuragi may save the city, but if she fucked up even one slight thing, she still also gets called off work and possibly lose her job. This manga is a perfect mixture of fictional and reality. You know those things are happening, but as long as Sakuragi enjoys her life, well, maybe we let her be. Maybe we should worry about another person that lives far off from a happy life. Rudo is an outcast, but he is more than an outcast. He is a trash, a trash that has no right to live in this world. 
all these people like him live in this cramped slum behind a giant hole of the abyss, a place where they throw items and people that are no longer needed. But there is something peculiar about Rudo, something that everyone hates him, despises him. Even scavenging for food in the waste, he cannot do it without getting kicked and thrown away like a trash he is. Everyone hates him. Everyone but two. A girl that always waits for him and a man that is closest thing to being a father to Rudo. Chiwa and Recto are the one who drives Rudo to keep on living, seeing her smile at the end of the day telling him to hang on and a man that only cared for him when no one did. And what happens when those two were taken away from him? Recto was found dead inside their house, murdered by someone in cold blood. Rudo is shocked, rushed to his body to check if he's still alive, but what only remains of him is only his lifeless eyes stared back at him. Rudo hugged his body, holding tight to what's supposed to be his only family, but little did he know, he already set his fate. Rudo was accused as the murderer, without no one backing and caring about him, breaking the trust of the only person who believed in him, he was sentenced to the abyss. One thing that really strikes me the most in this manga is the godly expression and the character design. Immediately you can feel the hatred and the pain in his eyes. And just with this one panel, I went from not giving a single fuck about him to maybe I could fix him. But the story didn't end here. Rudo is thrown to the abyss and as soon as he wakes up, he realized the abyss is a whole another world. There is a giant mechanical monster that tries to eat your face, a group of people that hunts them, and a whole functioning civilization. I don't know how the author can make a full universe based on trash and a power system also based on trash. Everything in this manga is just trash. Let me just say that Rudo first ever fight with someone is with one of the cleaners covered in human waste. I feel Gachi Akuta just keeps building up, ready to introduce you to even bigger world and concepts. I have to give a huge props to the author for making some of the most unique character designs and the worst expressions known to humankind. Currently there are 80 chapters and 9 volumes and believe me, it doesn't feel like this manga has reached its limit. There are still a lot to introduce, a lot of questions that haven't been answered, and a revenge plot that hasn't been fulfilled. Anime and manga have introduced me to stuff that I never knew before. I remember when I was watching Chihaya Furu, hoping to get a little bit of romance that I never had in school, but instead, I was introduced to Karuta. And you bet on the left nut that I was addicted to Karuta when that happened. I even memorized the thing they said in the beginning as if I speak Japanese. And it's been a long time since I watched Chihaya Furu, and I thought I already knew everything about in this world. But until I read this, Akane Banashi is a story about Rakugo, a traditional Japanese form of storytelling using minimal props emphasizing on personality in each character of the story. Rakugoka is the one performing the Rakugo, and Akane's father is one of them, a highly talented Rakugoka and often performs Rakugo in different places. One day, Akane saw her father practicing Rakugo in his room, and just like the first time in 2020 when you open up Genshin, she is addicted. Every day she spends some time seeing her father training, imitating her father doing Rakugo, and even using the technique on Rakugo to make an excuse of her punching another kid. Akane's life since then is all about Rakugo. Practicing, imitating, and perfecting the art of Rakugo. But more so, she is also the biggest fan of his dad. She wishes her father's success more than anything in the world. That's why when her father was wrongfully kicked out by his master, even though he put the performance of his lifetime, Akane is set to step on his father's path to become the best Rakugoka Japan has ever known. Now you might be wondering, why would I read a manga about Rakugo which I have no idea what it is about? Why would I want to read 200 paragraphs in a manga when I could read shonen that has amazing panels like the one I showed you before? Well, Akane Banashi has both. There are some panels that are so amazing that I cannot put into words how good these panels are. They even made two full stretch of a page only Akane doing Rakugo. 
The way that this manga portrays Rakugo is almost exactly one on one in real life. Take a look at these expressions Akane's make. The face of emotion, passion, enthusiasm in her face. And I'm sorry, if your girl cannot make these kind of faces, they are not the best girl, I'm sorry. And it's not only the expression, but the story itself inside the Rakugo is also fucking interesting. It's crazy that you are basically reading a story inside a story, and it's equally amazing. It's just the story Akane is telling. The passion she pours into these stories makes me want to read it again, again, and again. It makes you want to stand up, hands on your face, and cheer for every step she takes on her journey. Akane Banashi has introduced me to something that I never thought I would like. Just imagine when this manga gets an anime adaptation. Just imagine.